Hey, Sean Jantz here, and I'm gonna do a quick battle plan for Monday, uh, May 15th, and I'm gonna do it on Slash ES, which is the S&P 500, and Slash NQ, which is the NASDAQ 100. And every single, I'm gonna start here on Slash ES, every single Sunday night, I always start on the daily chart. You can see right there, the D for daily. What I'm doing here is to get to, to kick the week off, right? What I'm doing here, is I want to get a broad, broad view of the market here. Like what's been going on the last two, three, four, five months? Like where are we comparative, you know, in, in larger time frames? Like I can't stress this enough. Guaranteed, if you're a newer trader and you've been struggling, guaranteed it's because you don't understand what's going on on the larger time frames. Guaranteed. I've, I've been and helped now thousands and I've helped hundreds of people on our chat room. It always boils down to you have no clue what's going on on the larger time frames and you're just trading a five minute chart not actually understanding what's going on, right? So this is what I call taking a bird's eye view of the market. Like we're going to hover over the market and really start formulating a bias here, right? So let's check this out. We got the daily chart here and last week we caught a daily candle sell trigger. I mean, it was beautiful, right? And it was all pre-planned for you um, on last Sunday night's trade plan as well. We were about right here last Sunday night. I said, hey, I mean, we're in for a daily candle sell trigger. And what was cool is I even said last week, 2380 should be kind of the longer term bear target to the downside. It literally last week went to 2380 to the tick. And it was just because we all knew what was going on in the daily chart. We knew the daily candle sell trigger was going to happen like it is right there. We got the weakness. It was pretty simple, right? And so as far as looking at this daily chart, we're not necessarily massively overbought like we were last week, right? But we still are mildly overbought, right? And you can kind of see our daily charts is basically sitting right there. It's just like a beautiful reversal star, right? Just kind of a, an indecision star meaning nobody's really in control of the chart, bulls and or bears. They're kind of battling right at this 2390-ish zone. And, and so as far as the daily chart goes, as far as like looking long term for the week, obviously I still want to be, my bias is to the downside, obviously, right? I mean, long term, bears get through this 2380. We could be off to the races. The next target, obviously, is the 2360. And then back up to the upside for the week, we got that 2400 right there is all time high since the beginning of the stock market. All time highs is right there. So you're witnessing history right now. OK, and we can use 2400 for the week as, as our as our resistance um, where I want to be looking for resistance. And if we if we do run up to that 2400, I can be looking for my weeklies up here as well. W E E K in the money weeklies. I want to be selling up above all time high, but I can't sell it right now. I would absolutely need this to retrace and then I can get my weeklies. OK, so now what we do now, what we kind of see what's going on. Now we move to the four hour chart, which is the most important chart as far as for a day trader. We're getting our bias here on the four hour chart. And when we look at the four hour chart, it's very, very clear that we are basically right at equilibrium, right? Overbought is when price is in there. Oversold is when we're down here, right? Overbought, oversold. And then right at the zero gray line or white, I guess if you want to call that white. We are equilibrium. That means that we can be a bull and or a bear tomorrow. Nobody's really in control of this chart, right? So we just kind of need to wait. We just need to wait for strength one way or the other. So we have plenty of room for this chart to kind of run right back to this all time range high, which is basically 97 to 2400. So let's go ahead and write that down. And then, of course, we have a really nice range low. And its range low is pretty clear, 83. Um, we have a decent range low at 85, and then we have a pretty massive range low uh, at the 80. So let's go ahead and write that down as well. We have 85, and then we also have 80. So we kind of have the 85 and then the 80. Five points apart, we can kind of use either one as kind of a support, get through, next target, obviously 80, and then we can look for support right there as well. So now what we do is we move to our 15-day, 15 15-minute 15 plot chart. And what we're doing here is we're just looking for structure. 
we're looking for the best places to, to buy, best places to sell. We're looking for support, resistance, supply, and demand zones, and maybe a trend line if we see some really, really good trend lines, which I just drew right there. It's a pretty clear-cut trend line, right? And what I always do to keep it simple is I always start on the deviations, and then I look left to see if there's any structure there. So our first deviation level right here, we look left. Yes, we have all-time high right there at 2403. And but honestly, I will not be trading up above the plus 0.5 deviation tomorrow. We have no structure up there. We don't have any volume or trading action up in this zone here since the beginning of time. Don't even bother. Move on. Right? We're here to we're here to make money, not to just get in here and gamble. It's stupid, right? You're here to make money. You only make money on high, high probability areas on the charts. Right here is stupid. Don't even try. Move on. Okay? I'm I do though really like this zone. I really like this plus 0.5 Wednesday's POC. We look left. We had to the tick resistance, resistance to the tick resistance right there. So right now we're we're touching that trend line right now. So we're at decision time for these bears. But if this chart does want to continue running higher, get up above that trend line, then use the trend line as support. If you want to maybe try and spread that higher, you can. Okay, you would enter right there on an at the money binary or an at the money spread or a traditional futures trade. And then of course use that plus 0.5 as your take profit target. So if you wanna try that, that's how you do that. If you wanna try and spread that higher, it's not a ton of points, but it's still plenty, it's still plenty of good money. And then of course we use this zone as resistance Okay, you'd want it to touch the plus 0.5, then look to enter on a one minute candle, lower high. And for sure, if we get up to this zone, I definitely will be looking for my weeklies up there as well. I'd love to try and stay up above 24.10, and I'd like to sell above 25 or higher on the weeklies on the sell side. Now, if we go lower, okay, you'll notice that we will have some decent structure right here. It's literally set and value area high. So then look left on that zone, right? Lots of volume, volume to the tick support, volume, resistance, 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 lots of volume to the tick resistance. So much freaking going on at that level. Are you freaking kidding me? See the difference? Why would you trade up here when you got levels like this to the left? That's how you continually to make money. Stay out of crappy areas on the charts like and I'm a little fired up and it's just because I've been doing this so long. I've seen so many people lose. I've seen so many people quit and complain, but you're trading bad, bad areas on the charts. And I sit here every single night telling you exactly what to do, but you still can, most people, sorry, most people, and I'm not talking about anybody in particular. I've been doing this a long time. I'm talking about all the people that have quit over the years. It's like, stop, only trade these specific areas on the chart. So if we go lower, Okay, we got a potential buy trigger right off. And that, and here's the deal. Set and value rate high absolutely can hold a support, but it's gotta be a quick, quick trade. We're talking, if you look for a buy trigger off a of value rate high, it's gotta be quick. We're talking probably, right? And we know that can hold a support um, because of the training, right? You just, you just watch the training center, you get through the training center, and all we do is we trade the same damn patterns day in and day out. It's almost boring right because but it's so fun and so simple right so we can use value rate high as a quick quick buy trigger because we still have so much structure to the downside you cannot be holding a buy trade right there too long and if we get through set now as we go lower we got our zones right we got value rate low as a target and support basically value rate low in 2385 so there's our and again, you remember that. I just wrote it down for you. So we can use that as a bear target. We can also we can also use that zone as support. And we can also use that zone as resistance. So break out. Now we find our one minute candle lower highs right there. Then guess what? Guess what? Minus 0.5 deviation is literally to the tick 2380. I just wrote it down. And I'm not just putting those levels there because of the structure. Those levels are there because of math. You gotta freaking love this stuff. If I'm not blowing your mind after watching this th two, three months, like 
I have feel like I've literally cracked a code at this deal. It's it's I can and honestly, here's the deal. I have no clue how much longer these types of stuff that I that I've prepared. I don't know how much longer it's gonna last. Maybe something will change. I don't know. Maybe volatility will change this up, and then these deviation levels don't work anymore. Value areas don't work anymore. So you gotta capitalize it now. Okay. So we bust through value. We bust through 23.85. We then use 2385 as resistance right there. We enter right there and add the money binary or add the money spread. Go ahead and put your stop loss probably at 2390. So probably have about a five point stop loss or a four. And you can maybe use 2389 stop loss. So maybe you have a four point stop loss and then go ahead and, and then use that 2380, 88 and a half. So then you risk, you basically risk four points to make five points, right? That's how you do it. And then go ahead and put your take profit right there, right? Because look left on the structure. You kidding me? Support, 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 support. Breakout. Come on. Guys, this is how you do this. You find inflection points on the chart and you just let the chart come to you and then you strike, right? No inflection points here. If charts goes that high, move on, trade something else, trade Forex, move on. We will come back on Tuesday and regroup. But if we go lower tomorrow, okay. Here we go. We got structure, structure, structure. It's beautiful, right? That's how you do it. I continually to see people trading non-structured areas on a chart, continue to lose, and then they cancel, which I could care less about your $89, okay? I haven't, you know, I make plenty of money even outside of this. I'm literally here just to have some fun, make some extra cash for you and your family. Like I hate seeing people lose and I hate seeing people going rogue on the trade plan and losing. Like I just don't, I just pull my hair out. I don't understand why you do that. Stick to the easy stuff. Just stick to the easy stuff and don't try and make become a millionaire your first week trading here or even your first year. It's not going to happen. Okay. So once we get to the minus 0.5, we definitely can use, we definitely, um, we can get to the minus 0.5 deviation. We definitely can look for our buy triggers off of that minus 0.5. So you'd want it to touch. Then look to enter on a one minute candle, high or low. That buy trade doesn't have to be as short. That can maybe be kind of a, some dailies down there, or maybe a quick little in the money hourly as well, okay? Or obviously buy whatever you want, um, but daily in the monies could work right there. Now, we do know that the daily chart's extremely overbought, right? So let me just go back to that daily chart because at any time the bears on this daily chart could drop hammer on us, right? So of course, obviously we bust through this, you know, uh, obviously if this daily chart wants to, you know, cause look, look, look at that. Look at our Fisher transformer. All the Fisher transformer does is cycle down, cycle up. Now, of course, our word, we're, we're now form, now we're inside of the cycle to the downside. So obviously our, I don't think we'll make it to the 2360 tomorrow, okay? But, you know, the 2360 is kind of the long-term bear target. And so, so knowing that information, obviously, we have plenty of room to run down into this, um, you know, when we look left on here, there's 75, 75, 75, 75 breakout. So I wouldn't be trading the minus one. My last zone, so if we bust through minus 0.5, and I really don't see this happening. This is just me teaching you how to pre-plan for everything. I don't think this is gonna happen. But if we do bust through plus 0.5, minus 0.5, we then can maybe, I mean, if these bears are still super, super strong, we might be able to continue just running this chart lower and we just ride that daily chart all the way down to the 75. So we bust through, then instead of using 2380 as support, what we do is we use 2380 as resistance right there. We enter right there, we put our stop loss at 2384, okay? And then we go ahead and put our final, final take profit at the 75, not the minus one. We put our final take profit on the 75. Okay, so I went into some extreme detail there. Hope you learned a lot and I can't wait for this to actually unfold. Hopefully everything kind of works out. So now let's just quickly move over to sl slash NQ. I'm gonna make this really, really quick because this one's pretty simple, okay? We're at all time highs, literally as I'm talking right now, we're at all time highs. All time, all time since the beginning of time. We are so crazy overbought on this chart, it's stupid. Obviously, I want to take this chart lower. 
Um, I will be looking for my weeklies. I'd love to try and stay up above 57.50 if I can. Okay, um, sell anywhere from about 23 to 25, maybe even 30 on the sell side. So I will be looking for my weeklies. I've made a nice, honestly, almost a living selling this damn chart for the last 90 days. It's been phenomenal. I'm just going to continue to do it, by the way, and continue to dominate this chart. So obviously, we're at all-time highs right now as I talk. The higher we go, the more I just want to sell weeklies. I'm not going to be selling you know, nothing else other than weeklies up there. Now, if we go lower, um, we can look for potential quick buy triggers off of value area high. Same thing as ES, right? That used to be all-time high right there. We just busted through it. So we can look for quick buy triggers on value area high. And then here's what, let me show you the four hour chart and let's write down some numbers here. Four hour chart, crazy overbought, middle blue Keltner, let's write it down, 75 to 72. And then of course we got the 5660, which there's a lot of stuff going on on that 60 level as well. Okay, so check this out. If we get through value area, high tomorrow, we could be in the running for an 80% roll to the downside, right? So here's an 80% roll. You've learned this in the training center, right? You get through value area high, then we find our one minute candle lower highs. Okay, we put our stop loss up there, and then we put our take profit at value area low. Okay, very, very simple. You just watch the training center. It's like, what, an hour and a half long? And then you trade the same thing, same concepts over and over and over again. No, we need no indicators. We're just trading structure. We're just trading the market. We're trading price action. And we're just trading our plan, honestly, right? And so we bust through value area high. Now we find our one minute candle lower highs, maybe an entry right there, maybe another entry right there, put our stop loss, you know, five, six points to the upside. And then we got value area low. We got two POCs right there waiting, just juicy, just waiting for us to take our profits right there, right? Once we get to value area low, we definitely can look for our buy triggers off of value area low. And if we bust through Wednesday's POC, we then we just, instead of using that zone as support, we use that zone as resistance. We enter again. We put our stop loss right there. And then we go ahead and use Friday's POC and minus 0.5 deviation as our second take profit. Pretty simple if we go lower. And honestly, here's the deal. I will likely not be trading beyond that minus 0.5 deviation. Same thing though as ES, you might be able to use Touch the minus 0.5 and, and then in look to enter on a one minute candle higher low for a quick buy trigger off of the minus 0.5. We bust through the minus 0.5. I'm going to put question marks there. Hopefully you made a freaking killing, okay, that you should not continue to, can, don't continue to trade after you just made a killing, an 80% rule and everything, and then you go for more, like that's not how this deal works. I will not be trading beyond the minus 0.5. So comment if you have any questions, make sure that you're recording everything you're doing, take pictures of all of your trades and post them in the group and in the chat so that you can get feedback from me and from others.